All right, we're we're ready to go live if everyone's all set. Everyone's all set? All Great. set. Well, welcome, we'd like to welcome you to the Town Finance Committee meeting. This is Tuesday, September 15th. Um, and so I'll call the meeting to order. I don't know, Colette, if you take a roll call of those that are, that are here or not, but. Sure, I can take a roll call. Sure. Councillor Hayes? Here. Councillor Gleistein? Here. Councillor Clucci? Here. Thank you. And then item number three, I think this will probably be, um, you know, this is to approve the minutes of June 19th and August 13th. It kind of goes back a ways, but I think we've kind of had some changes in schedule and other things. So would anybody, a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any comments, discussion, changes, edits? Hearing none, all those in favor? And I think uh, Coletta roll call again, probably. Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Gleistein? Yes. Councillor Clucci? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. And I think this evening or this afternoon, we really have one agenda item, which is really reviewing, hopefully, the final review of the TIF in the CEA policy that I think we're trying to get to the full town council. Um, Tom, I don't know if you want to kind of take us through yeah. where we've been. I know you've done a great job of putting the documents together. There doesn't seem to be lots of changes from where we started from, but if you want to mm -hmm. take us through it. Sure, I'll do my best. Uh, Liam's pulling it up. Uh, just to kind of paint the backdrop, the last time the Finance Committee took the matter up, I believe it was at your meeting on August uh, 13th. Uh, at that, the draft that you worked from at that meeting was um, – um, heavily influenced by comments, I believe, from Councillor Gleistein that might have been some months earlier. But uh, at any rate, that was the majority of the changes at the time. Mm -hmm. And I've done my best to capture uh, from my notes uh, that discussion and the proposed changes, um, though I, I have noticed in the meantime, or, or since I, I circulated this draft, there were a couple of pieces of input that I failed to incorporate. And so let me just kind of call those out right at the beginning. and. Perhaps we can be mindful of them as we go through. And I believe it was Councillor Clucci um, talked about kind of two areas. One was the cost to serve analysis and how, if at all, that might be useful and, and worked into this policy uh, as a decision, you know, piece of information for uh, the final decision. And perhaps uh, the tax shift implications of a particular proposal, meaning what effect uh, a TIF and a CEA uh, would have on state subsidy and county tax implications. And I guess the final point that I don't recall coming up specifically at your last meeting, but it's come up in the context of these discussions right along is whether or not we uh, employ kind of an expert review uh, to advise the council before any final decisions are made. Uh, those three notions aren't specifically incorporated. So again, I want to call them out and we can um, talk about them and you can direct us as to where to work them in if, if you desire. So the, the quick backdrop to what you see before you is uh, the Councillor Gleistein's comments are shown generally in red. And then, is that right, Liam? Yes, red, blue. right? Blue, blue. I think blue, blue, I think. Blue, okay, I'm sorry, blue. And then red are the change, changes that I captured and incorporated from your August 13th meeting and then the highlight, which is really uh, the last appendix, uh, is something I'd suggest, or at least to talk about um, whether or not we need it, uh, just to kind of simplify the document. So with that, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman, we can kind of go cover to cover, if you like. Sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe just start on page one. And so yep. that, did we see the blue language before? Is the blue language new to this version? I believe you saw it. I think the colors changed since it was last okay. looked at, but I believe that's okay. language that uh, that was in your last review on the 13th of August. Okay. Anybody have any comments or issues on page one? So, um, Tom, you'll see underlined in blue, it says, is a not. It probably should just say is not. Yeah. Um, I just had a quick thing before we go through page by page um, the cost to serve analysis 
the tax shifting implications an expert review is do any does anyone have um, staff or members have uh, ideas of where where you think those should be uh. It, if I recall, my comment was when we were reviewing the <clears throat> analysis of the uh, uh, affordable housing CEA uh, for Little Dolphin, and uh, there was a schedule that showed a uh, cost of serve analysis that I thought yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, that I think I was you know, signaling that that might be worth including as an appendix or an example of uh, what would be a, an acceptable or decent cost of serve. Depiction. So, but, so, so maybe Betsy, before we get to your question, I guess the, the, the first question might be, do all three of us, you know, where do we stand in each one of these? So maybe if we just take them one at a time, I do remember the cost of serve analysis. Um, I'd like to see that included somewhere and maybe staff, staff come back with a recommendation of where it is Do How does everyone else feel about the cost of serve? It, is there agreement that that makes some sense? Yeah, I think that that makes sense to, um, we, we know we do it, but to we, we've done it for, you know, everything I've been involved in. And I think you guys have done that before because Karen had, you know, pretty extensive process for doing it. So we know that we do this, but to codify it in the policy that there will be a cost to serve analysis done prior, you know, to the, the, the uh, council workshop. I think just captures what we already do. As I, I could be wrong, but that's that's kind of what I think. Yeah, the the only potential reference to that is uh, I've added it's way at the end, Liam, Appendix B. It's in the scoring criterion. Um, I reference a positive uh, return on investment, and to make that calculation, you need to have the the expense side of things, the cost to serve, but. I hear your point. Uh, we can call it out more clearly um, in the document itself. So, John, I'm, I'm assuming because it was your suggestion, you're comfortable with it being incorporated somewhere, the concept of cost or serve? Yeah, and it might just be a sample exhibit, you know, that, that would be passed on probably to the Finance Committee when it, when it got to that point in the process. If I, if I could just, uh, we, did, we did put that under section two rules and conditions. We, we made sort of passive reference to the project is financially advantageous to the town. Uh, so we did include that language, which I think was related to the cost to serve analysis. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but that, but doesn't, that's what that's trying to set up under two though, is that they have the economic projects need to satisfy at least three of the following. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be done because it was satisfied. So, so maybe, maybe we go down through this. So it sounds like cost to serve analysis, at least conceptually makes sense. I think the second one that John suggested is a tax shift disclosure, which I, I think is part of the financial analysis too. I, I think that's a great suggestion to try yeah. to, Modify. What is that? As time goes on, that could be a significant number that's that's worth considering. And I think that the expert review, sort of all all those three flavors, make some sense. And, and so the first test would be John and Betsy. Do you agree that those are worth referencing in some fashion in this document? And we can leave it to staff to embed it where it makes sense. Yeah, I agree that they all three make sense. I do too. I, I think with with regards to the expert um, review, it, can you elaborate a little bit on, on what you're looking for? Because I, I know that we have outside counsel help with um, pulling these together from the town's perspective. Are you looking for something different than that or more involved? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, at least, I mean, I, I've probably been the one that's been most vocal about it. I think it's important to have, I mean, the outside counsel we have gotten has been sort of a legal review about legal review of the terms and the documents and those types of things, which I think are important. I think though, um, having some type of 
outside expert review of just the, the specific terms and the economic modeling and other things of these CEAs as going forward. So an example of the last one would have been, gee, if, you know, the, 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 the terms that changed that ended up, you know, not impacting scoring, but changing dollars, you know, was an important piece. So it, it's, it, and then certainly around the Scarborough Downs, which is a much bigger project, um, you know, a lot of the economic modeling, I think, um, you know, and, and maybe we make it conditional. Maybe there's some ways that maybe we don't need the expert review for every CEA. Maybe there's at the discretion of the, I, it's, so I, I'm open to how we frame that. Um, but I think in certain cases, it would be helpful to have that on the front end before the workshops rather than at, at the nth hour when we're between first read and second read and, and trying to do it. So maybe like tiers, like, like if it's a you know, less than a $2 million CEA, uh, maybe in-house and SEDCO can you know, provide the analysis if it's two to five or something, somebody else. And if it's greater than five, maybe you want a couple extra steps. Is that kind of along the lines? Sense. Yeah, sure. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, it sounds good. Tom, does that make your job impossible at this point to do that? I'm just trying to find where to incorporate that. Uh, I heard a suggestion that it would be good to have that information prior to the workshop. So that would be somewhere before step All three. Of the steps. Yeah. Uh, but the way John just described, I think it probably needs to have its own um, presence elsewhere in the document to further refine what's nece what's needed given certain circumstances, dollar thresholds is what he suggested. Um, so maybe a financial analysis section. Because there's the, there's the um, applicant who's gonna have, um, you know, their story they're telling through the application they're putting in. And then um, there's the work that we do um, and then potentially, you know, and the attorney, as well as what John, the tiers John just suggested. So it's, I think it's a kind of fleshing out a little bit of the financial analysis and maybe the tax shift could also be included in that and the cost to serve. Yeah, so I think where it may fit that best, and Lee, I'm sorry, I'm in section two at the end of it. Um, there's a section credit enhancement agreements. Yep. So we could keep going. We could add another bullet on that page there. Mm -hmm. That would be termed financial analysis and that could, it would incorporate all three of those concepts. And then we could reference the word financial analysis in the steps in, in section three, step three. One of terms, Tom. Yeah, it might be a separate bullet all to itself called financial analysis. I'd be fine. I'd be fine with that approach, Tom. Yeah. So right after level of funding adjustments, then financial sure. analysis. Okay. And then, and then we can reference simply the, the word or phrase financial analysis in the next section, because we already have it kind of defined. Yeah. John, does that conceptually work for you? I think so. Okay. Betsy, it's a, you said it did. So Tom, we can leave it in your good hands, you and Liam to kind of, and, yep. and I'm not sure we need to, when are we trying to get, are we trying to get this on? Yeah, our timing here was, we thought you could give a good thorough report tomorrow night uh, during council or committee reports. Um, and maybe um, foreshadow the fact that this is be coming to the council at some date. The next one would be October 7th, I believe. Okay. I'm not sure if we're going to have opportunity for a workshop just because we already are um, have one scheduled, but um, I can talk to Don and Paul tomorrow. I, I'm, I've got my standing meeting with them. Okay. I thought on that, Tom, it might be that the, um, the charge, the work for the rules and policies for the charter committee went, I thought it went very well. It seemed like the, our committee was very receptive to it. The workshop may not be as, as long as we think on that. We might could combine the workshop to at least kind of go through a part of this or something, just a thought. Hmm. 
Well, we do have both downtown and charter on uh, for the oh, workshop downtown tomorrow. downtown and charter. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed yeah. that. So I think I think we're going to need that plenty, hour. Right, <laughs> you're right. That's more than plenty. But let's let's worry about getting through the document tonight, and then we can talk about you know how best to bring it forward to council. Yeah, well, the, what, what I was trying to think though, Tom, we're just thinking about whatever that was, whether if we're pretty much fine with everything that's been in front of us tonight, it, with the exception of what we just added, mm -hmm. whether we needed to reconvene or uh, whether we could actually approve this document just by having it go once more through us. So I was just trying to. Well, Peter, uh, like, well, I don't know if it was you, Peter, but uh, for uh, the charter review, no, for downtown, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, the final go around was just a, an email review and a check-in. So we could try that. If you guys have heartache, then we'll schedule a meeting. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we go through. So I think with that, Tom, if you're ready to, to insert the, and land the appropriate language where we just yep. talked about and then get it to us, I think that works. And take, I think that takes care of the three additional items um, and I'm sure all of you have probably, what do you guys think the best process? Do you guys have any, do you want to go through it page by page or you just want to single out any pages that you may have had questions or comments? I'm okay to do the latter. Okay. John, how about you? I, I'm open guys. Okay. Let's, let's maybe just go to any place. I mean, I've gone through, I mean, I think it's pretty clean. Um, the, the, the first place I have a question is on page two. And the amount of, if you can go to that, at least the draft that I have, I wasn't quite sure. Yeah. Oh, back. I think that language right there that says the project will enhance environmental protections resulting in a more sustainable community. And then you've got the red or pink or magenta or and then you've got another bullet. So I don't know if that, what was intended there is it? Because the next bullets, the project is financially, just seems like it's missing a thought. Remember, this is the one where they have to meet three of no, three uh, bullets. Yeah. I, I, I had a question around that too. You know, what's the measurement? Financially advantageous um, is a fairly subjective characterization. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, I guess there's two questions. I just didn't know what was meant by the, I mean, all the others don't have the or it looks, I was just trying to understand whether there was an intent by putting or and something's missing. Or, or maybe. No, no, I drafted that. That was just a stylistic thing. All of those are separated by semicolons. And okay. I just put the or because it was the final item. In, the final uh, item. Okay. So yeah. there, there's not something missing. It's just that, no, the structure. No, okay. Just the structure. And now you're questioning whether that um, the project is financially advantageous to the town. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, I think that makes sense to me being there. I, I know it's yeah. somewhat vague. I don't know what John and Betsy think, whether, I mean, we kind of define further on, but I think there needs to be a financial piece in there. And again, because it's a couple out of all of the bullets, that won't be the final determinant necessarily. Right. Well, and then we, you know, we, we get back into the rating sheet and look at things more specifically, but, you know, you would think that maybe we would, you know, say, you know, does one of the criteria is if it, if it um, meets with the comprehensive plan, you know, fulfills an element of the comprehensive plan. I mean, and then um, environmental protections. You know, so I, I had a, so these get really similar to the rating sheet and I had a, I had a couple of changes on those. So I don't know if I'd want to make those changes to, to both places or, you know, it's a, you know, this is, I guess, just a kind of a gate to say you're even going to start the process. Um, so this isn't really, uh, so we haven't really spelled out here. Um, is this just that an applicant would say, okay, I am going to meet three of these so I can go forward with the application. So I, it's a little confusing to me what this section is exactly. Where yeah, the, sorry, the terminology is a little confusing to me as well because 
um, it, it refers to projects and we can use TIF, TIF funds for municipal projects that are also considered economic development projects. So that's what our 3% in the downtown TIF would go towards. Mm -hmm. And is this policy expected, uh, I, I guess are, are those uses expected to follow this policy and application process as well? I guess it, it, it it's not clear to me. Right, uh, uh, even the term TIF funding kind of threw me off because we're trying to create a policy for when you would create a, a TIF incrementing financing district and apply for CEA. So there's, I think the, the first section kind of throws me off a little bit based on the work we've done since the first section. <laughs> Didn't throw me off originally. I think it's really, rather than TIF funding, it's really apply for a CEA, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Right, but we have all kinds of other criteria in here. So I guess I'm just asking, is this just a gate to say, you know, they go forward with an application altogether or or anyone can do an application? I mean, do we do we really need this section, I guess? Because we have a, quite a few things in beyond this um, where they're gonna get scored um, and financial analysis is gonna be done. Um, so. Well, again, the value of this is it's a process for applicants to be able to look at before they yeah. even make contact. And so I view this as the applicant kind of self-scoring. Yeah. Just yeah. it is that initial bar. Do I meet three of these? If I don't, I'm not even going to apply. Right. So I'm just saying, though, I mean, it's very similar to the scoring sheet where they're going to score themselves too and give an explanation. So I just wonder if if we say, do they meet three off the scoring sheet or they shouldn't even apply. So we take the scoring sheet, we're going to attain or, you know, attract or retain business, directly implement this, you know, because that gets the comp, the comp plan, you know, to say, do you meet at least three criteria on the scoring sheet? We have the financially advantageous. But it just seems like a little over. So say eligible to apply for a CEA if they meet at least three of the following objectives on the scoring sheet. But, so I don't know. It's certainly dealing with all the same general territory. I, I don't disagree. Right. Um, this is a fairly low bar. I, you know, I, I would yeah. think a project of any value should be able to easily meet at least three of those objectives. Right. right. Yeah, then, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's just, it was. Uh, yeah, I, I'm okay with it too. I, you might consider changing the pro word project to CEA or something along those lines. But honestly, most people probably won't be that that deep into yeah. it. It's a decent introduction. Well, I'm going to change to funding to a CEA. Just yeah. go up, Liam, just to the bottom of the next page. Yeah, the, where it says TIF funding. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as we're on this page, then um, I was wondering at, at the top, if we wanted to say the purpose of the policy and the process that the town of Scarborough will use initiating or considering, or do we want to say economic development TIF um, and for credit enhancement within existing or new TIF districts of any type? Because I, I thought that we had, um, said that this, this is probably not gonna be an application for an affordable TIF, but we just had a CEA within an economic development TIF so that somebody could still apply for a CEA through this particular process, through any kind of TIF that we have in place. Um, or are we, are we kind of saying, you know, because it, it gets a little contradictory because it says it's made on a case by case basis by the Scarborough Town Council and the main department of um, economic community development, which is not where an affordable housing TIF could go. So I didn't know if we wanted to call mm -hmm. out specifically that this is for an economic development TIF. Well, the title does, but I, uh, you're, uh, I understand your point. The title is specific oh, the to title in the document um, itself, because the, the heading doesn't. Uh, let me look at the Yeah, economic development. Okay, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's got that title. Okay, perfect. I'm good on that then. So I think 
then on page two, I think John has made a suggestion. I think we're generally okay with the language is there. John made a suggestion of possibly changing project to CEA. Was that your suggestion, John? I, I think that the adjustment that Liam just made was fine. I, I think okay. I All right. Okay. The next, the next place I had a question was, I think on page, it's down under credit enhancement and agreement. I don't have page numbers. So it's one, two, three, mm -hmm. page four. The red on page four. Yep, right there. Um, I was just wondering, this was new language we put in, to the degree the town is interested in frequent reporting from the developer, such expectations will be negotiated as part of the credit enhancement agreement. I'm just wondering if that's too restrictive, what if, we're a, what if it's a 30 year period of time and somewhere in the middle of the period of time, we decided that we needed reporting. Um, is there some modifier we can make to this that you know we can we can identify it in the CEA, but the town council has the ability to come back and modify the reporting requirements? I think you negotiate that language in the CEA. The CEA will be a, is a legal the contract, so I don't know. I don't think okay, I see. in a policy would give you the ability unilaterally to to change the terms. Like, like we did with the downs, you know, we wrote right in that the first five years we want an annual report and then I think it okay. falls back to five year increments or some such thing. Okay, so your, your, your suggestion is that each one would be somewhat unique and we'd, we'd need to write in the ability to modify reporting requirements as we go along? Yeah, and I think you'll know it. Um, I mean, let's be realistic. You know, we're, we're not going to have many of these first off. And yeah. I think... The council at the time will appreciate the magnitude of the financial partnership and hopefully have conversation around we want to know about this as as uh you know on a, on a regular basis so I, I think that language is good it puts everyone on alert uh, including us uh as a reminder these are points that we should consider when negotiating ceas okay. can i go back just one um liam there, yeah right there uh, Councillor Gleistein, we included this language and we have this parenthetical note attributing it to you. I mean, that doesn't need to exist. I just want to check in that that, that language correct, is correct. Can you scroll up a little bit, please? Yeah, that's good. Okay, so Liam, just remove the parenthetical if you could. Okay, thank you. And so I don't know if anybody else has any questions. I don't have any questions until the end where it's it's a yellow highlight, which I think is suggested to be edited or eliminated. Right. Does anybody else, John, Betsy, anybody else have questions in the body of the document? Yeah, I had I had a, I had a few. Okay. I think Tom had under application B wanted to have. A diff, a, an additional discussion on staff time, whether we wanted to include that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Liam, I think, can you speak to that? You added that language, didn't you? Yeah, I, uh, it was, uh, I, I think it was a little bit, I think the comment in the last conversation was a, it was a little bit clunky. So I think we tried, uh, tried to rework it so that it uh, was more expansive and or summarize what those would, what those costs would be. Um, and, and this may also dovetail in with the financial analysis potentially, because uh, we sort of hold out. Uh, it was sort of with that that we sort of talk about third-party costs um, and pro professional services related to, you know, process or consider an application. So from my standpoint, that could include, you know, if we're looking for a financial analysis, uh, then perhaps some of those funds uh, could be allocated to, for that purpose. I don't know how far $2,500 will go, you know, and, and once you start racking up those fees, but uh, that was, that was the purpose behind reworking it was to try to capture some of those additional yeah. opinions. Yeah. That's a, you okay with the language? I think it's good. Um, and it, you know, it says if it's insufficient, um, I, you know, it's, I guess it's possible an applicant might want to have a cap 
but um, yeah, I, I think all the work does have to be done. I like it. I think it's good. John, you comfortable with it? Yeah, I'd be fine with you. I'm fine with the $2,500 fee, but I guess if it's a big one, you know, similar to the downs, then yeah, it costs a heck of a lot more than that to do some of the analysis to, uh, so yeah, I, I'm fine with it. Right. Well, it does say that if it's insufficient, they'll yeah. assume responsibility for the third party costs at least. So not necessarily the staff time, which makes sense to me because the staff time would be difficult to quantify. Okay, so then we go into some of the forms. Um, so I had I had one other thing I thought. Okay. I, I thought we kind of talked about that maybe not having the state application in here, but if we're going to have the state application in here for a reference, which it's not bad to have it, um, I would just make it Appendix A because I think Appendix um, A and C go together. So. Um, a is kind of the um, basic information, uh, you know, about there, and then then um, C is the narrative for the scoring sheet. Um, so, I think just I, it's a little confusing when you're going through it because all the questions are the same. But I think if we just put Appendix B as Appendix A and make sure we put on it on the actual appendix that it's it's the state application, you know. Or we could just have one sheet that would say, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, at the time we'll include the state application because the state application could change too. So I'm not sure we need a copy of the state application. I agree. I think it's confusing to this. I, I would suggest we drop Appendix B altogether. And so A is the application and then B would be the narrative, applicant narrative. Right, because they'll they'll have a cop, copy of that state yeah. application at the time, and they can get some of the definitions to help them and all of that. And to the extent we need their involvement in filling out the DCD application, we'll we'll get that. But I, I I don't think it's necessary as part of the policy. I think this is a holdover from Freeport, or one of the ones we started with. To be honest. Right, and then I think on Appendix A, um, we talked just a little bit about, so this is mostly just really, uh, it's, it's good stuff with in terms of um, data. So I don't think there's, the only question I would take off of that is public benefit anticipated because that's really what they're answering in the narrative. But the rest of it is what's the cost? What are you asking for? What's the description, the lot, who you are? That one public benefit anticipated is what they're going to answer in the narrative. Do people agree with that? Because that's not like a short one sentence answer. I, I'm fine yeah. with that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then on the um, on the scoring sheet, um, I don't think we have to get to a hundred. And you know, maybe we kind of talk about this at council a little bit. But um, I did want to add on the enhanced environmental protections resulting in a more sustainable community, either a separate item or add to this item, enhance or improve access to natural resources. And then I did feel like in terms of the score, att attract, retain, and expand business for improving the town's economic base um, deserved a higher score than five. That was number one. I think that's a pretty high priority. Yeah, and where you draw from uh, is likely number five, which I weighted the highest as a 20 point possibility. Right, so if that one was 15, the other one could go to 10. Correct, yep. And then, and if that, you know, I just picked a 100 point scale. There's nothing magical about that. 
Um, right. You'll notice at the end of it, we've left a blank for some discussion uh, as to whether or not, based on this approach, whether or not you wanted to articulate a minimum score. Right. So if we didn't want to add a separate category, 11 could be worded, enhance environmental protections resulting in a more sustainable com community and enhance or improve uh, or, or increase slash improve access to natural resources. Sorry, Betsy, was it environmental resources? Um, natural. That, natural resources. So I would say increase instead of enhance or enhance slash increase because enhance and improve would probably be the same thing, but the project that would, you know, literally give people more access to walking trails or beaches or whatever. Okay, great, thank you. Unless committee members are not in favor of that. That was just one I had. It's fine. Me. So Liam, then that would have to be changed on the narrative number 11. Sure. We also have to, uh, I apologize, I, I failed to incorporate 12 onto the narrative as well. So that would. Okay. Okay, great. We'll clean that up. What do you think about having a minimum score? So you mean the last note applications that receive a composite score less than? Yeah, yeah I, I don't see any benefit to throwing that in there because it, you're assuming that we have perfect foresight, right? That we understand that if it doesn't get above the score, then it's not going to be worth um, looking at. And whoever's on the finance committee or council at the time may disagree with that assessment. There might be other variables that come into play that say, yeah, this is something we should look at as a town. So I, I don't think you should uh, confuse the issue. I, I guess I don't see any benefit to putting a minimum score in, in there. Yeah, and I think I failed, but I tried to make what could what started as a subjective process as objective as possible by by boiling it down to a uh, to a number or numbers, I should say. Um, I hear what you're saying. I don't disagree with with your comment at all. But what if a project scores a 25 out of 100? Could be that our scoring criteria is flawed. <laughs> Touche. Okay. I mean, if you know, given that something would score a twenty-five, and the committee still wants to put put it forward, right? Then that's the, apparently whoever's sitting at the seat at the time thinks that that's the you know it's a problem with the scoring criteria. Fair uh, enough. Which could trigger that it needs to be updated or amended or whatnot. Okay. I kind of thought that that was there mostly for the selfish scoring. If they didn't score a certain point, there was no point in bringing it further into the process. No, the, my thought here was with, uh, we referenced composite score. So this would have been the finance committee's score. Score. Yeah, so yeah I mean, if it's something is less than 25, I would say, you know, council's pretty busy. Um, I mean, it doesn't take much to get to get to 25. So, but you can't stop a future finance committee from recommending that the council consider something. I guess is my point. So that, I, I don't. Yeah, that's true. If, so they can look at it and say, if it's it's, hey, 25, we're not going to recommend it go forward. Right. They could they could say, or it could be a 60, and they don't recommend it go forward. Right. Yeah. I see what you're saying, John. Yep. Okay, well, we can remove that reference altogether. It's a good thought. Um, okay. But I think that I think the idea of a score is helpful because then, you know, it kind of gives you a little bit of objectivity on some subjective criteria and go, wait a minute, this this thing is not not really meeting, meeting the criteria. So, so as designed, uh, as I proposed, and you just amended a bit further, we're really prioritizing, um, you know, the uh, the kind of the economic components of a proposal. Yeah, that's heavily weighted. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's bad. I was just calling it out that that's clearly the the message being sent by the possible scores here. But they do relate to economic development. Yeah. 
TAs too. And it's possible that other counselors, you know, might want to tweak these once it gets to council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, I want to talk to leadership. Um, I'd like to avoid, if possible, informal session, um, you know, having seven counselors redraft this by way of formal amendment. That will just not not end well in my prediction. So uh, if there's a way we can workshop this, I, I'm going to really push for that, just so we can have a more informal conversation and kind of work through these issues yeah. without the regimen of, uh, you know, formal formality. Right. And they might, you know, I think a tweak to a score here or there could be fairly simple, but we'll see. <laughs> we thought that in the past. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. And, the, and then the thought of getting rid of the Appendix E is just, everybody's okay with that? Uh, yes. Now, I was just trying to simplify things uh, and I wasn't seeing what 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 value was added necessarily yeah i agree so I, I i'm fine with taking that away i have a thought and i don't know where exactly it fits but i'll throw it out there especially since ruth's here um <clears throat> something that i think would be helpful when we bring this to the full council maybe as a part of this policy or maybe as a separate document is just a summary of what do we have out there for tiff districts today which ceas are in each district and in fiscal 2020 or 19 um, what do we collect in taxes? What do we refund back uh, to CEA or TIF development projects? And, and then what was the offset from uh, the county tax, uh, municipal revenue sharing and state aid from schools or for schools? Um, I, I just think having a snapshot like that and getting yeah. used to looking at it would be helpful. I'm not, I maybe think one pager or something. That's huge because, um, you know, we talked about it briefly last time and I know we don't have the same um, you know, level of economic development department as Portland, but, um, you know, the documentation that Portland puts together for their, uh, TIFs and, you know, the one pager for each one that exists is hugely helpful. And it sounded like, um, and I not remembering where I heard it now, but it sounded like, uh, with the downtown development that there may be some additional CEAs requested. Um, and so I think this policy is going to become really important and a, a portfolio um, that's regularly updated of what we have in town exactly the way that you described, John. Well, it might set up a framework for learning too. Like we might see something that we right. did with one CEA and then the results and, um, and, then, and then want to replicate that or not. Um, right. Yeah, I think, you know, if we're going to be considering these, we're going to have to look at the back end of it. And that's looking at the results. Yeah, I agree. So and the tax shifts, you know, the things and the, the ones that we change on the fly, if we ever do, et cetera, et cetera. So Tom, I think it sounds like generally there are some minor tweaks um, to the document. Feels like substantively we're all in a good place with it. And it's as we talked about at the very beginning that, you know, the one piece to put in is the financial piece. Everything else, I think, is pretty straightforward. So we'll leave it. It sounds like you're having a conversation with leadership. So mm -hmm. whenever you think it's going to make sense to get it on the agenda and if there's a way to do a workshop, like we probably need to formally approve a final document. I'm comfortable doing it by email or just, you know, again, just the highlighted changes. Uh, John and Betsy, are you comfortable doing it by, by email or, or would you like to go through it one more time? I'm comfortable. I think I, if we have a problem with what was, what's sent out, then we can try to call a meeting. If yeah. we're all good with it, then great. Okay. And I, I feel like we're being true to the public because this is what the third or fourth time that we've discussed it. And um, it is hard to put together, you know, a complex document. So, I think that we're not, we won't be saying anything that we haven't already said in public. And the document would be on whatever agenda or workshop is called. Right. Sure. Yeah, so I will prime the pump with them tomorrow. This is our weekly standing meeting. Um, yep. And then Peter, I think it would behoove you as finance chair just to report out uh, at the meeting for the rest of council and for the public's benefit, kind of where we are. Yeah. Um, 
I think Liam and I will probably try to turn this right around for you just so we can kind of move it off our desk too. Yeah. Um, I can't guarantee that you'll have it and be comfortable with it by tomorrow night, but I think you can say that we're getting very close and would like to schedule a, a workshop or find the best way to advance this to council. Okay. Everybody comfortable with that? John, yeah. Betsy? Absolutely. Okay. So I think with that, um, the final item on our agenda was public comment. Liam, I don't know if we've got anybody in the audience that would like to weigh in on this subject. Uh, we have no one in the audience. <laughs> guess, I guess finance really doesn't excite them, huh? <laughs> uh, okay, so with that, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, just really quickly, you know, thank, yeah. thanks to all of you guys and to staff for working on these um, changes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Well, I don't know you want to. Councillor Hayes? Yes. Councillor Gleistein? Yes. Councillor Clucci? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yep. See you. Get you out.